All right, well, uh, without further ado, Alex and Bala Reddy. Hi, you guys. Okay, so I'm Alex. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ballot Ready. And Ballot Ready is an online voter guide for local elections. So our goal is to make it easy to vote informed on every race, on every candidate, on your whole ballot. Um, I'm gonna start with telling you about why we thought we should create this. Um, okay, if you live in Illinois, just so you know, you're represented by 70 different elected officials. And I have a little pop quiz for you. Of those, oh sorry, how many can you name? <laughs> you're gonna know the answer. How, think about how many you can name of those 70. So if you're like most people, you shouldn't feel bad, you, you know the name of the president, your senators, the mayor, you know, you might not be able to get up to 70. Maybe you only get to four. And this is, especially important when it comes time to vote and you see a ballot like this. Um, and maybe you are recognize some of the names, but there are a lot of names you've never seen before. So the, the problem that we are trying to solve <laughs> is if you're like most of us, you enter the voting booth prepared to vote for president, maybe your senators, but then you show up and you see all these offices that you don't know what responsibility they have, all these names you've never heard of, and what most people end up doing. So 30% of people don't complete their ballot. And that's both the Cook County stat and the nationwide stat. And so in 2014, what this looked like was people were casting a vote for governor, but by the time they got down to the judges, they just, they stopped, they gave up. Um, and this case in particular, this judge, Annie O'Donnell. So many of you may know about bar association ratings. They do a lot of work to rate all the judicial candidates. They, it's an hour and a half long interview. They ask for 20 references. They go through their court filings. And they come out with things like, okay, this judge was, she was not recommended by any bar association. She was actively not recommended. And they said she had an abusive practice, unduly flip and rude, <laughs> okay? Which is not the worst thing you could do. There is another judge who actually assaulted someone in her courtroom. Um, no judicial retention judge has not been retained since 1990. So, mm, we need help here, right? <laughs> okay, so some judges can either be, it's either a contested race or it's like they're reelected to keep their job. Does that make sense? Question? Okay. So, in, for all the judges where they keep their job just by an election, they've always been retained in that job since 1990. And maybe this can be the year where a judge is kicked out. We'll see. Um, so the, the problem is for people that, like, people are looking for this information, and many of you have maybe tried, but if you're actually going to vote informed, you have to go to the Board of Election, you have to go to the candidate's website. Maybe they don't have a website, you go to Facebook, then you go back to Google, look at the Tribune for their endorsements. Maybe they have a Wikipedia page, and that's, maybe you feel informed about one candidate, but so for this election on March 15th, if you're voting a Democratic ballot, beyond president, there are 46 other candidates. So just brace yourselves. Um, so we made ballot ready, so you wouldn't have to stress over it. And what we do is you've, we ask you for your address so you can, we can show you every candidate that will appear on your ballot. And we show you background information. Uh, this is a little small, but you can pull up the site. It's, so we show you who endorses candidates, their stances on issues that we pull directly from them. Um, and 
you know, news articles about them, their previous experience where they worked. Um, we, so we're doing this for Illinois right now, the, mar the primary on Tuesday. In the US overall, there are half a million elected officials. <laughs> um, we, we have a plan to strategically scale, but the, the problem, is, and John Oliver just did a segment on this, like we spend so much time thinking and talking about Trump, Bernie, Hillary, Cruz, and, but so many of the people actually doing work and representing us are these people who, like, we barely even know their names. Um, and they have a huge impact. I th you guys, of all people, probably know the impact they have. But like state reps are deciding which schools should be funded. Um, they're deciding which mental health clinic, whether mental health clinics should be reopened or not. State's attorneys are deciding who to prosecute. Uh, water reclamation commissioners are deciding the quality of our drinking water, the direction of our river. They do that too. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we, we think that it shouldn't, these, electing these sh people shouldn't be left up to guesses by a few people. Um, so our theory of change is that if we provide accessible information, more, there will be more informed voters, which will make better politicians and stronger, stronger communities. This is not only the fundamental thesis of democracy, it's also been backed up by research, which I can send you later. <laughs> um, so currently, we get information on all the candidates from, directly from them, from their websites, from organizations that endorse them, um, Board of Elections, news articles, all questionnaires that like newspapers and League of Women Voters fill out. Um, we always are looking for sources of voting records, campaign contributions, and uh, candidate speeches. Um, every bit of information we have on the site, we link to its source. So in this election, we had a candidate say, oh, you know, I realized I, my opponents have a stance on this issue, but I don't. Can you say this? And we say, you should put that on your website. When you put it on your website, we'll say it. We don't, we don't want them telling us one thing and then saying another thing somewhere else. Um, we, the way we get the information on our site right now is uh, very structured crowdsourcing. So we have what we call hackathons, which might piss off some coders. The point is, we're getting people, we're hacking democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so we partner with political science departments at universities, and their students come together to research this. And we have multiple students research the same bit of information, and we are partnered with universities across the state, you know, uh, city colleges, uh, U Chicago, Northwestern, Loyola, Western Illinois University. SEIU, SIEU, not the union. <laughs> um, so that's how we get the information. We also partner with civic organizations of all sorts to get this information out to voters. So this is just a random sampling of the people who share us to uh, their members or um, people there on their email lists. Um, and we have got backing from a lot of awesome people. David Axelrod gives us advice, very critical advice that we take into account because he's right, <laughs> and Ray LaHood. Um, we are, we just today decided on our roadmap for the next, through 2016, and this is wrong now. So <laughs> you don't have to look at it for that long. We are covering not just, so after we cover Illinois, we're covering a primary every month uh, for the rest of the year. And then we're covering a bunch of states this November. Um, so that's ballot ready. We hope that everyone uh, can vote informed. And I also have stickers that you can have. You don't have to do anything for. <laughs> 
So I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> First. So your like uh, idea here is to have more people voting in an informed way. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it be better to have less people vote? <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Why would it, like, like, like the yeah. Problem is there's a bunch of un people are making uninformed. Just noise. On these, yeah. on these down, on these down ballot races, wouldn't mm -hmm. it be better to say, hey? If you don't know anything about this race, just don't vote on it. It doesn't take care of the judicial retention problem. True. Um, we think that people actually want to know. Not just, they don't just want to feel good about their voting decision. They don't just want to feel like they're not failing the test that is their ballot. They want to be more engaged in their communities. And one way to do that is learn about the local officials, what their responsibility is, and the candidates, what their stances are. Basically, we think this is a way for people to start creating a stronger narrative about their community, the politics in their community, and what effect they themselves can have. So, so it's not really about collecting better people? It is, <laughs> it is about that too, but... We, I don't think we could have an effect on, we can't say, hey, people stop voting, <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> we, we do think uh, this will be able to motivate people who are on the fence about researching, being, casting a, an informed vote to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you mentioned earlier that uh, there was a candidate who wanted you to say something specific and you told them to put something on their website. Yeah. Have, like, can you tell maybe some more stories about like crazy things that like yes. you've encountered and trying to cross to get this information? Yeah. We got something wrong. We, uh, we said that a candidate was married to a woman and she had three grandchildren and she's like 40 and married to a man and she was so angry. <laughs> um, so, and, you know, we figured out why we got it wrong. We figured out a way to never make that kind of thing wrong again. But that sucked. <laughs> um, other crazy things. Uh, we, we don't get, so we've had candidates who were like, please, um, I want to have my profile on the site. And we're like, it's already there. <laughs> you have no say in your profile. So, because we want it to be fair and unbiased for everybody. Um, we've had voters ask us to cast votes for them wow. through our Facebook page, like uh, specifically for Trump, <laughs> which, and I'm like, I'm sorry, we, we do not do that. We cannot vote for you. I can, we can tell you where <laughs> and when to vote. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. So what marketing strategies have you guys tried and how did they go? Yeah, so, okay, the main one is partnering with organizations that, like, are really excited about our mission and just see this as a resource. And so I mostly talked about civic organizations, but companies have also sent us out to their employees. That's one. We do Facebook um, and dark posts on Facebook, native ads. And we just experimented with, um, we have a blog too, which you can check out. And we have quizzes that are like, which, which uh, candidate aligns best with you? And those, we, we wanted to test that out also because that might be a more useful way for people to take in all this information. There's so much content a quiz might be the fastest, most fun way. So we might do that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I used this site before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, about the judges specifically, mm -hmm. is there any way to make it more like, like, cause mm -hmm. there's like 20 judges and it gets like more boring as you go through. Yeah. Like you don't know like I know. 
like what they do. So like by the time we got to the fifth judge, I was just like, um, is there anything to like increase engagement with like yeah. that very okay. part? One thing is we, the judicial ratings just came out, so we just put them on the site. I don't know if they were there when you were there. Then probably not. Uh, that's a little more exciting <laughs> because some candidates s are like not recommended by all judicial, uh, uh, by all bar associations. But yeah, we're looking for ways to experiment to make it more fun. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I do, and I just had a meeting with David Orr, and he, they like are talking about a thing. They were like, David Orr is the suburban Cook County clerk, yeah, in charge of elections for suburban Cook County, not for Chicago. Um, but and he's like a hotshot board of elections guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> he was like, you should have a QR code reader because in six years we're going to have it where you just like put your phone up with the list of people you want to vote for to the voting booth and then it's like you're voted. Um, we also ha do partnerships with, um, there are companies that do online voting for things like the Oscars and the Grammys and like non-governmental districts. So they're like very active, but uh, boards of elections, actually 30% of county boards of elections in the US don't even have websites. So online voting might, and electronic voting might happen a little later, but definitely not that far off. Yeah, yeah. So the page you had up with the um, candidates for state's attorney, mm -hmm. it had all their profile and all their information. But yeah. Does it have anything about the office itself? Like what are the types of things they do? Like why is it important to vote for these or a judge um, or whatever it may be? We don't have that now, but we've gotten feedback that it would be super useful. So we're going to add it. The one thing that kind of helps you get a sense is the stances, the, the issues. Mm -hmm. So you can like, uh, click these and then compare candidates by the issue that you care about. So like La Laquan McDonald or diversity and the issues are different for every race. So the, the presidential candidates are not going to have Laquan McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I kind of have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. first one I'll ask first. That's, uh, is, so if, if the goal is to make more informed voters, yeah. uh, do you guys specifically try to target or figure out what, whether a voter is an informed voter or an uninformed voter, and whether or not to reach out to specific groups of people? Uh, how do you yeah. plan on that? Okay, so right now we go after people who are already likely to vote, and we, th so, before this, we did this voter behavior research. We talked to over 150 voters, some of whom we found at, op at what was then OpenGov at this event. Um, literally everyone we talked to admitted to either not completing their ballot or guessing. So our kind of theory hypothesis is everyone is uninformed. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess my other question is uh, essentially, you structure crowdsourcing to collect information on the candidates, uh, and it seems to play a role that's pretty similar to what journalists already do and what newspapers already do, which is collect information on the candidates and provide it to the public. So, mm -hmm. is there, are you using technology in a different way, or is there some way that you're, you're doing that process that is better than a trained journalist? Uh, no offense to like a room full of political science students, like I used to, yeah. I used to be one. So. Yeah. Um, it's, we actually don't need the skill of a journalist because we're finding information like where did this candidate grow up, tell us what 
stances this candidate has. And they're taking it like in the same words the, like uh, as the candidate says on their website. So um, it's, does that answer that question? It, we don't, it's similar to what journalists do, but also we're working on automation efforts. So like one thing we do is we tag every issue, every stance with the issue that it's relevant to. So if I say candidate A supports funding high schools, we tag that with budget and K-12 education. That, we're trying to automate that so it's not less biased and faster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there a function, I, I can select everyone I want to vote for, email it to myself and take it into the... Uh, yeah, yes. You can save the one, yeah. Do you have an app? We do not have an app because we thought that people wouldn't want to take the time to download it, but we've gotten some feedback. We might change our mind about that. Yeah, yeah. How do you all fund this? So right now we're funded by the National Science Foundation, the Knight Foundation. Um, we won a competition at Chicago Booth, um, the Institute of Politics at University of Chicago, Center for Policy Entrepreneurship. We're in an accelerator now called Merge Lane for women-led companies. Do you plan to continue to be funded through grants? We plan to raise an uh, investor round, seed round. Yeah. Yeah. Where does the list of issues mm. come from? Is so, there an answer? I mean, is that like a, a you know, survey that the, that the candidates come on? No, we go to their websites and see what stances they have, and then from there pull the issues. Do you, but do you characterize their stance? Mm. We say which issue it belongs to, which issues it belongs to. So uh, you click on uh, diversity and yeah. it'll give you a link to something that's said about diversity? And like yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll show you the text and we, we will link it to its source. So, so one of the things I found with voting is, is like, I'm kind of a one issue guy. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, there are civic agencies that, that spend all their time, they know everything about that one issue, mm -hmm. but they can't tell me who to vote for because they're, they're not you know, they, they, They're not allowed to say who to vote for. Yeah. How do you get, it just seems, I'm sort of skeptical that I'm uh. gonna get a really clear view of what this person actually thinks about diversity if I click on that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Are you saying you want to know, um, like I, yeah, can you rephrase that? Who's my go-to source about diversity? What do they think? Who would they vote for? Is yeah, so we do list all the endorsements, but things li like um, Black Lives Matter doesn't endorse candidates, for example, and that, that was like a specific choice on their part, and neither does BYP. So. But the, some individuals endorse candidates, so you might be able to glean from there. Um, I'm not sure where else. So other than like the questionnaires that candidates fill out, they might not be saying anything at any time about diversity. That may be a reason to vote one way or another. Yeah. It just seems like there are a bunch of people who really know what all the candidates think follow it, but they're not allowed to share their really not full opinion with me. Yeah. And I wonder if there's some way. <laughs> I, yeah, no, it's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. How do you determine uh, which endorsements? We put all of them. So uh, new ones come in all the time, and then we add them to the site. <coughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they have to be like listed in a source that we're already looking at. So the candidate's website, an endorsing organization's website, um, maybe a candidate's like social media. Does that? Yeah, like, I mean, but like, what criteria would you use on organizations, right? Because anybody can form an organization mm. and say that. Yeah, we, I, I don't think we've had that problem yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure. I I will find out. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. After the election, how can you tell or how are you gonna measure your success or Yeah. Um so we do a couple things like we track how far through the ballot our users got. So we want most we want a lot of our users to get all the way through the ballot. <laughs> so if you're going to use it, you should go through the whole ballot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you looked at how much time people spend on the elections that like everyone actually participates in, like presidential election, compared to the judges' elections? Like, is it the same sort of ratio spent learning about presidential candidates is very high and no one actually takes the time to learn about judges? Or I don't know the answer to that today, but I'll probably know in like two days. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned that there would be an effort to uh, provide contribution data on candidates, and um, I was hoping that you could talk a little bit more about that effort um, and what kind of information you would be providing, um, specifically whether it would be just, you know, direct contribution data to so we are going to implement the uh, ICPR um, <laughs> Illinois Sunshine this week. So, and probably what we'll show is like uh, some summary on the candidate compare page. And you can click on each candidate and see like the full profile to see all the information that we've collected on them. And we'll probably have more detailed information there. Okay, so like 501 C6s or 537? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's I'm a not committee that, that donates, like so the State Board of Elections records every donation um, to political committees. And that's what Illinois Sunshine shows. So yeah. And in other states, it's not as nice as Illinois because they don't have the Illinois sunshine. <laughs> Any, yeah. yeah um, in terms of development, uh -huh. how, how long ago did you, you guys have started this project? Uh, how many are you in your team? Yeah. Yeah, so we've been working on this for a little over a year. We've had the site working for, um, we had a pilot in the mayoral runoff election last spring. We covered Kentucky and Virginia last November, and so now we're on our, our third market. Our team is, there are four of us. Um, we have a lot of awesome advisors, like David Axelrod and Ray LaHood, that we are super helpful, yeah. So we did a, a dialogue with you guys today at UIC, and the students were looking at, so they looked at the state's attorney race and the, the U.S. Senate race, and they really liked information, but one thing they felt was missing mm -hmm. was any, any kind of neg any negative information. So for example, yeah. say this candidate has a conviction for bribery, mm -hmm. and it's like, that would be, be important information. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm incorporating some of that type of Yeah, yeah. so, and this is definitely something we want to do. Right now we just list the headlines of news articles unless there's a stance on an issue in there, but we're also going to next time pull out what's in the news article so you don't have to click on every one to read it. So that, that's where that information would come up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you for profit or not for profit? We are for profit. Do you have any plans for how you monetize? Yeah, we do. So. One is we've experimented with having ads on our site, so candidates can put an ad in their profile. And the feedback that we got from that from voters was like they liked seeing how candidates represent themselves and their messaging. Um, we also are thinking about having like surveys on the site that would replace the over the phone polling that campaigns do. So like when they call you and they say, what do you think about this issue? So s a sort of feature to like give feedback to this campaign so that campaigns can better represent the voters. Is that it? Thank you, Alex. Ah, thank you.